Well, I want to read you a couple of, of quotes uh, in starting out here. D. James Kennedy said, in reading over the constitutions of all 50 of our states, I discovered something which some of you may not know. There is in all 50, without exception, an appeal or a prayer to the Almighty God of the universe through all 50 state constitutions. Without exception, there runs the same appeal in reference to God, who is the creator of our liberties and the preserver of our freedoms. God is the author of any freedom that we have. Yes. Amen. The United States of America exists to uphold that. Yep. To uphold the fact that God has given us liberty. Oh, yeah. Has given us, through the Lord Jesus Christ, the ability to worship Him, and He gave every man the choice to serve Him or not. No man can tell another man what to do in their lives. The United States of America is unique in that it, it has given the people the ability to govern themselves and say so we authorize some of our peers to take, a, say, take certain positions and have certain authority that we will give, and if they're not doing the right job, then we will replace them. But it comes back to the individual, and that individual freedom comes from God. Amen. And that's what, what we're celebrating today, Amen. is that we live in a place that was founded upon the freedom and the liberty that God has given us. The freedom that the Lord Jesus Christ purchased for us through His blood, every person has the ability to receive that, but it has been extended. And our country is unique in the fact that it respects and protects that. Patrick Henry said this, he said, It cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not, uh, founded not but religionists, but by Christians, not on religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wow. It's not just ideas, you know, religious ideas. It's on fact of what the Lord Jesus has done. Yeah. And if God doesn't rule and reign by force over people, then men should not rule and reign by force over people. Because people can be corrupted. And people's ideas that are not godly then can influence people's lives and their relationship with their God. And so what, what our founders were so wise in doing, they said, we understand that people can be corrupted and power can corrupt, so the only way that we can keep that pure is to give the power to people to govern themselves and to decide who governs them as a peer and as a servant, not as a Lord. Amen. We don't serve anybody who's in any position. They serve us. Right. And they serve the society, the, the country, the locality, the state, like we read in every state constitution, it references God Almighty. Nobody can grant you freedom. God, the creator, granted us freedom. No man can take freedom or give it to you. And that's what every you know, country, other country to some form that, that isn't uh, founded on the same principles when men start being in power, they start imposing their will on other men, and men can easily be manipulated and corrupted, and then that gives the enemy a foothold. And so that's what we are celebrating. We're so thankful. 
for the wisdom of our founders and so thankful for this great country uh, we live in. It doesn't say you're not better than other people. You're, we're thankful for the institutions that we have that were founded on such principles that they support what God has already done. It's not that, yeah, thank God he has, Jesus has died for all men. But there isn't the same uh, pattern in all the earth. There are many places where people are oppressed extremely because they're under the thumb of another person rather than having the freedom to follow God and to do what's on their heart. And number one, to worship Him freely. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, let's look at... Um, praise God. Let's go ahead and look at Galatians 5, verse 1. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Amen. Who made us free? Christ. Christ made us free. And so we're to stand in that liberty. Notice it says liberty. Liberty and freedom go together. They're synonymous. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17 says, Now the, the, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That ought to tell you something right there. Where God is, there's liberty. Right. Satan is the oppressor. Right. Satan... Where he works, there's destruction, there's killing, and there's, there's destroying, and there is bondage. But where the Lord is, there is liberty. In the NLT, it says, for the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom. That's what we have through the Lord Jesus Christ. Liberty, freedom, the ability... To be free from death, not leaving this, uh, you know, everybody's, their body's going to die. But we're talking about death in all its forms eternally. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you're not going to be separated from God, which is true death. Your body will go in the grave, but you're still very much alive. Amen. Anybody that you know that has passed on, that was a Christian, passed on from this life, well, every person is alive. But every person that's passed on knowing Jesus, they're very much, they're with the Lord. Amen. They're in your future, not in your past only. But they're coming, they're, you're going to see them again. Amen. They're in your future. It's just like, you know, if you, if you haven't visited a relative for a while and you're going to see them, you know, in a certain time period, in you know, a few months or whatever, well, maybe longer than that, that you get to see a loved one that passed on, but you will see them. They're in your future. Yes. Amen. You're going to say, hey, I'm here. And they'll look up and say, whoa, you're here already? <laughs> because time doesn't work the same. And the time is timeless. They're going to be like, what the? they see as God sees as far as time. They experience it. And it's going to be like that, and you're going to be there. And you're going to, they're going to see you. And I mean, even, so, even if it's another hundred years, it's going to be like that to them. But, the, but where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's liberty. That ought to tell us something. Whenever you feel bound, whenever you feel oppressed, it's not God. Right. Ever. Right. I don't care if it's a church or if I care if it's a, you know, somebody that's teaching and they, you know, saying that they're uh, teaching the gospel. The gospel doesn't bring bondage. It doesn't bring fear. Right. It brings freedom. It brings liberty. It brings peace. It brings joy. Because that's what God is. So anything that starts bringing fear and, I don't know, or division or anything, that's not God, ever. That's just not, where, where would he get that? It's not in heaven. No, that's the devil. 
God is the God of liberty and freedom. John 8, 31, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And they answered and said, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, and, uh, answered them, Assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Verse 36, Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Thank you, See, true freedom is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Period. And, and like it said here in verse 35, uh, or uh, verse 34, he said, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Somebody said, well, I'm free, so I can do whatever I want. No, it, it, you do that, you put yourself actually back in bondage. Free, but using that to do the wrong thing. I think we'll say more about that. Well, let's, can you skip down to 1 Peter, since, we're just, since we touched on it, we'll touch on it now. 1 Peter, um, actually go to Galatians 5.13. quite a few verses down, Galatians 5, 13. It says, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. We've been called to liberty. Amen? Amen. That's what we've been called to as a Christian. Brethren, that's sister and two, you know, brothers and sisters, children, men and women. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. See, that's what we're called to do. We're called, we have been made free through the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we are to use that freedom to serve Him and not to serve our flesh or not to serve uh, anything else. Anything, if, if we get yield to the flesh, if we yield to sin, it'll bring us into bondage. It actually, we put ourselves back into bondage even though we're free. So we always want to use um, our freedom to love, to serve, to flow with what the Lord said and what his ways are always and that's what we've been given you know in, in the in the society we live in is that we've been given the opportunity to choose to serve the lord to choose to choose not to be forced if god himself doesn't make you bow the knee no man can make you bow the knee so don't ever try to force anybody not that we would do it intentionally, but you can't, you can't shove the gospel down somebody's throat. You know, sometimes you wish you could just open up somebody's head and drop in a truth and close it and be like, okay, now they see. We're all like that. We all wish, you know, sometimes you, you, know, you look at yourself and go, good night, if I would have known that 10 years ago. I wish you could go back and dump it in your own head and be like, all right. But you can't force anything on anybody. God has given men a free will. And if God will not force them to choose Him so that they can be eternally with Him, you're not going to force them to do anything else. Let's look at Philippians 2, verse 5. Went back to kind of where we were before for the slides. Philippians 2, verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. So they're saying Jesus, may, he said, this mind should be in us, which was in Jesus, said he made himself of no reputation. He's God, remember. He came as a man of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. A bondservant, we're going to read what that is. Deuteronomy 15, verse 12, because that's referred to over and over in the New Testament. And we'll read those, uh, some of those references. But look in Deuteronomy 15, verse 12. shows us what a bondservant is and what's being referred to. Verse 12 says, If your brother, a Hebrew man or Hebrew woman, is sold to you and serves you six years, then in the seventh year you shall let him go free from you. 
He's free. Everybody say free. And when you send him away free from you, you shall not let him go away empty-handed, but you shall supply him liberally from your flock, from your threshing floor, and from your wine press. From what the Lord has blessed you with, you shall give to him. So you send him, he's free, and he's blessed. Free, and you give him some stuff. Verse 15, you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you, therefore I command you this thing today. Verse 16, and if it happens that he says to you, I will not go away from you. Now, he's free, right? Not being, arm not being twisted. I will, not, I will not go away from you because he loves you and your house. Since he prospers with you, then you shall take an awl and thrust it through his ear to the door, and he shall be your servant forever. Also to your female servant you shall do likewise. It shall not seem hard to you when you send, them, uh, send him away from you, for he has been worth a double hired servant in serving you six years. Then the Lord your God will bless you in all that you do. So this was a statute. This person served for six years, then let him go. And if he wanted to stay, then they would go through this process. And then he became a servant forever. This is a bond servant. Look at Romans 1.1. 1, 1. So several, you, you see this over and over. These are introductions to letters. This one's by Paul, Romans. It says, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. That, a bondservant, is a servant by choice. We are children of God, we become children of God by choice. And we become servants of God by choice. You choose Him. You're not forced. You have liberty. And in, when you're in the Lord, you have liberty, but you still have a choice what you're going to do with it. You choose Him initially. You know, the Bible says uh, in Romans, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls... Well, you have a choice whether to call. So the choice is everybody's on the earth whether they want to call on him or not. And when they, after each individual chooses to call on him, they, he's saved, you have a choice, You're in, you have liberty. You have freedom. But then you can choose what you want to do with that. But Paul is saying, I'm a bondservant. I chose to be God's servant. James said the same thing. James 1.1. 1, 1. It says, James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. This, notice this is like the first thing they're saying. Maybe like you coming up and saying, hey, I'm Jim, bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is important. Saying, I, I've, I am his. I serve him. And with my freedom, I'm serving him. I'm choosing to serve him. That's what I'm doing. First, or 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. So you see Paul, James, Peter, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter said, I'm a bondservant. I, I serve him. I'm free but I chose to serve him. Jude said Jude. It says Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. That brings with it the connotation. It's not about us. It's about him. Any freedom we have is freedom to serve him. Now you're free not to. But the freedom is actually to serve Him, and that's where the joy is, and that's where the peace is, and that's where fulfillment is, is deciding we're going to use our freedom to serve the Master. And the further you go in life, I know it's just been resonating with me. It is. I know we know this, but you know how you have a truth and it's just like, uh, it reverberates with you, and you're like, gosh, we've said that for decades. But then it just is like, you see it. 
It is all about Him. I mean, every bit of this earth is basically us people going through life deciding whether they're going to serve Almighty God or not. That's what it is. And we have all kinds of opportunities to do something else and decide we're going to spend our money somewhere, decide we're going to spend our time, we're going to spend our resources, we're going to get involved in activities. And all the while, God's on the throne and it's how we're going to respond to Him. That's it. There's really nothing secondary. I mean, there are secondary things. There's, there's, nothing more, there's nothing more primary than that. It looks like it. The further you get from God, the more it looks like there's a bunch of stuff. The closer you get to God, you realize there's nothing else. It's just Him. And what we're gonna, how we're going to respond to Him. 2 Corinthians 4, 5 says, For we do not preach ourselves. <laughs> We've got to be careful we don't preach ourselves or our ideas or our causes, or what we think about something, but, but what He says and what He has ordained. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and, ourse- and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. He says, we don't preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves are bondservants. Why, he said, for Jesus' sake. We're your bondservants. In other words, he's saying, we're serving you because of the Lord Jesus. We're actually serving him, which is why we're serving you, which is serving him. That's why we serve one another. That's why we look to, that's why we, we uh, are involved in doing things on this earth in his kingdom is actually to serve him. It's not for our own purposes. Anything that we do that's like about us, there's a problem. It's so easy to fall into because the world is about the world. In the world, it's about your status and who knows you and how much money you have and what are your connections and how well is your business doing and what is your income and what do you have and you know, wh- who knows you and what clothes do you you know, have, and who knows how many followers on social media do you have, and it's you, 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 you in the world. In the kingdom of God, it's about Him, and it's about Him, and it's about Him, and do you know Him, and what are you doing for Him? And that's it. When it starts getting you involved, we know something's wrong, or me, anybody, a person. When it's about us, there's a problem. Somewhere, there's a problem. Because we don't preach ourselves. It says, but we preach Christ Jesus, the Lord, ourselves bondservants for Jesus' sake. Galatians 1 verse 10 says, for, we, for I, do I now persu- persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ which is what we just said. If I'm going to do my own thing, why would I be a bondservant of Jesus? It's a good question to ask ourselves a lot. You know, okay, is what, am I do- is, is what I'm doing pleasing me or is it pleasing God? We ought to be pleasing Him. Doesn't matter what somebody else thinks you ought to do. What does he think you should do? Not think, but what is he telling you to do? What does his word say to do? That's the right thing. We have freedom. So he gives us freedom and liberty to choose, but there is a right answer in every situation. If we choose to serve him, choose to do what he would have us to do, lay down our freedom. I mean, we have our freedom, but we're, we're laying down our purposes, I should say, and using that to serve Him, doing whatever He would have us to do. Ephesians 6, verse 5 says, Bondservants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh. Talking to literal bondservants there, like we read in De- Deuteronomy, with fear and trembling in sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. He's speaking to, to literal people that are bond servants. He's saying, don't uh, serve your, the people over you. See, this would imply to employers. This would imply 
to anybody that you would work under. Don't serve them just as, uh, you know, as men pleasers, just so that they see you doing right. Do it as unto God, because you're actually his bondservant. May look like you're working for this person, but actually you're working for God. So we do it unto God. But as bondservants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. Verse 7 says, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good he does, he will receive the same from the Lord. In, the, in Colossians 3.22, something, you know, Colossians and, and Ephesians have a lot of parallel verses. It says, Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. So we are doing things because we fear, not runaway fear, but we honor God. We revere Him. We are living our lives for Him. Verse 23, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the, the Lord Christ. You serve Him. You serve the Lord Christ. Look at 1 Peter 2, verse 13. First Peter 2, verse 13 says, Therefore submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bondservants of God, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Let's read that again, verse 13. Therefore, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. In other words, if it doesn't contradict Scripture and under, contradict God's will for you, we're to submit to ordinances. That's what the Bible says. It says, whether to the king as supreme or to governors or to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evil doers or for the praise of those who do good. Verse 15, for this is the will of God that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. In other words, your behavior shuts up people that would oppose because you're doing things unto God. You're his servant. Verse 16, as free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bondservants of God. So we're free, but we don't use that liberty as a cloak or something that hides for some, to do something that wouldn't be right, but as bondservants of God. So we use freedom to be servants of the Lord. The freedom that He gave us, we use to serve Him. And that's the way it ought to be. In the earth, we are to have freedom to serve Him. That's why when we're celebrating our, our, our country's uh, birthday, Our founding fathers were smart enough to know, and wise enough, I should say, 
to know that the only thing that truly mattered was serving the Almighty and that people needed the freedom to do that. The freedom to serve Him, the freedom to use freedom to serve Him, and not to be pushed in how that's done, not to be pushed in somebody else's idea, but allowing God to move through men and women to do His work on the earth and to have the freedom to move about in doing that. And the, as we're able to do that, the more God's will can be done on the earth. doesn't have to be because some people have all the freedom and choose not to use it for Him. But we, can, we have freedom that is God-given, liberty, freedom through what Jesus has done to serve Him and to honor Him and to show His light and His truth in this world. Verse 17 said, Honor all people, love the brotherhood, Fear God, honor the King. In other words, serve Him. Look at one more scripture, Romans 6, verse 15. It says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? In other words, just what we just read. You know, you're free. Should we use that liberty as a cloak for vice? Here it says, shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? We have freedom in God, so should we sin? Sorry, it's, did you find that, Julia? Romans 6, verse 15, just it's under Romans 14, that big chunk. It's a little bit further down, skipped a few. I'll just read it then. Oh, maybe I didn't give you that one. Okay, I'll read this one. Romans 6, verse 15 says, What then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered, and having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. He's saying you have freedom and grace, just like what, what we read in 1 Peter 2, that you have freedom and grace, you're, you're under grace and you have freedom, but he's saying, should we use that freedom to do the wrong thing? And he said, no way. He said, you have been free from sin, free from doing anything evil, and now you've become slaves, or you could say bond servants. For righteousness, which means you have submitted yourself to doing the right thing, what God would have us to do for His kingdom, for uh, His plans and purposes. We have that freedom, we're under grace, and we willingly come back and say, Lord, I'll serve you, I'll serve righteousness, and we put ourselves under righteousness as a slave, as a bondservant, as a voluntary servant to His purposes. And as we do that, there is freedom in life, there is joy, there is peace, there is liberty, because He is not a hard taskmaster. He does not press us. He will never misuse us. He will never force us. He has he he will give us good things to do right plans to walk in and help help us to enjoy and uh walk in the fullness all this life has to offer while we're here so we make ourselves servants to the one that is life and we experience more freedom than we ever have the world is doing the opposite, saying, no, I'm free. I won't submit myself to God and all. And they're putting, what they don't understand is that's actually submitting yourself to the wrong thing, a bad taskmaster, which creates chaos. Yes. So it's not real freedom. 
Real freedom is in the Lord submitting to him voluntarily and saying, Lord, yes, I, you know, take me. I'll be your servant. And we actually, it's a paradox, but we experience more freedom than ever. And we can, people say, oh, isn't it, isn't it just, it's no fun being a Christian. I don't, you, you give up everything. Oh, no, it is freedom to become a Christian. And not only become a Christian, submit ourselves to him. We walk in true freedom then because we are submitted to the one who we are created to serve. Amen? True freedom comes from Him. True liberty comes from Him. And so as we walk in this realm, we can keep that in mind. Lord, any freedom I have, it's come from You. I want to uphold freedom. I want to uphold liberty. I want to support the, those uh, ideals because it propagates the gospel in the world and propagates his freedom. When men aren't free, as he's made them free, then they're actually in bondage. So as we walk, we want to make sure we're supporting that wherever we are. We support him. We walk according to what he has said, what, what he's telling us to do. And then we can rest and we can be calm, secure, strengthened because you're actually under authority. You're actually walking in the right place. You're free, but you've placed yourself there on purpose. And so there's a strength there. Nobody can push you around. Nobody can rock you. And then we look to share that same love, that same freedom with the world. Amen.